Okay, so this is a kind of an average size uh, spaghetti squash that I bought at the grocery store this morning. I checked the receipt. It came to, when they weigh it, because they sell it by the pound, it came to five sixty four dollars um, for this good size spaghetti squash. And this would take about, you know, an hour, hour and 20 minutes in a 350 oven to cook all the way through. You'd pierce it with a fork to make sure it was done. Um, and I will cook this one uh, one day soon. But what I've already done, actually... is I cooked one of the biggest spaghetti squashes I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, as I was trying to check out at the Algoma uh, market yesterday, the, the young man on cash had to call for a price check because he said this, this squash is the, coming up with a wonky price. It's $10.75. And when the woman looked at it, she said, oh yeah, that's because that squash is $10.75. Um, it was the biggest spaghetti squash I've ever seen and I bought it, I baked it. I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna scoop out the guts like you would do for a pumpkin at Halloween or any other squash that you're cooking. And then I'll show you how to shred the spaghetti squash meat out of the um, skin so that it actually comes out like spaghetti and you can use it with your pasta sauce or whatever, um, any other kind of sauce that you're using. Um, it's nutritious and low calorie. It's absolutely, almost virtually, 100% um, fiber, really, you'll know it when you see it, and um, very low carbohydrates. So for those of you on a paleo or a no-carbohydrate diet, spaghetti squash is just the ticket. Okay, so I'm going to take my good sharp French knife, and I'm just going to, I baked this um, at 350 for about, um, oh, I think almost two hours, hour and a half, two hours. I, I put it on a cookie sheet, as I always do with squash and sweet potatoes, to catch the drippings just so they don't burn in my oven. And um, I baked it for about an hour and a half at least, maybe two. I forget. I went for a walk. Um, so here's what the inside of a spaghetti squash looks like. You can see the, the fibers that look just like a spaghetti pasta. And we're going we're gonna to scoop out that... Um, the seeds in the middle because you don't want to eat those much like if you were cleaning a pumpkin at Halloween okay so I'm going to uh, take a big serving spoon actually this is a cooking spoon and I'm just gonna scoop out at the very fibrous core which is actually even more fibrous than you want to eat and I'm going to put it away in um, a bowl off to the side and when it looks like I've got all the really, really fibrous inside core and the seeds, okay, that side looks good. And then I'll take this side and I'll scoop it out from there. We don't want to eat that. Nobody wants to eat that. So we're going to take that out. And now what will remain inside the um, spaghetti squash is just the meat of the squash which is what you want, and there's lots of it. Like, it's a pretty good deal for the money. Five seventy-six for the small one, ten seventy-five for the big one. You're going to get a lot of um, vegetable matter out of this uh, squash. And the way that I um, tend to work the fibrous part of the inside, which is where it gets its name spaghetti squash, because it actually looks like spaghetti, is I take um, a pretty good-sized serving fork. No, you can use any fork. It doesn't need to be special, but I find the bigger, um, the wider the tines and the bigger the prongs, the better. So I'm going to um, pull all that out. And look at that. It looks just like, it looks like pasta out of a pot full of pasta. Okay. And I'm going to scrape it from here. And the more you kind of, it's almost like pulling pork. Um, the more you kind of pull it, the more it will shred and become fibrous. Um, so that when you Oh, there's a seed. We'll get rid of that. When you um, serve it with a recipe or freeze it with some pasta sauce, it kind of actually does look and feel like spaghetti. And it um, actually tastes better. I love the flavor of squash. I never get tired of squash. Neither does my family. Um, <laughs> we've actually now taken to drinking sm squash smoothies at breakfast. So uh, squash for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so I'm going to scrape every little bit of um, fiber, fibrous squash, vegetable matter, out of this skin that I can. 
and that will go into the bowl. Now I can serve it immediately. You can serve it with any kind of sauce. You could serve it with butter, salt, and pepper. You'd always want salt. It'd be very bland without salt, but you could serve it with butter, salt, and pepper. You could serve it with Alfredo sauce. You could serve it with pasta, tomato sauce. You could serve it with um, um, any kind of uh, cream or tomato or meat-based sauce that you want, wine-based sauce, like, you know, really anything you got going on. Or you could just have it plain with other vegetables. And look at that. So there you go. It does really actually appear like spaghetti. And it does have the texture of spaghetti when you put it in your mouth. And um, it is delicious. And uh, you'll enjoy it. It's inexpensive at this time of year. It freezes absolutely perfectly. So most of what you're seeing here today, I am going to um, put in Ziploc bags and freeze. I can put them in containers with my homemade uh, tomato pasta sauce um, and uh, make it an individual lunch. So you have like a spaghetti lunch um, with spaghetti and pasta sauce, but it's actually uh, spaghetti squash and pasta sauce. And hardly anyone will know the difference, except for that you'll feel like you didn't eat any wheat and you'll feel um, satisfied and full and happy without having had to put your tomato sauce on wheat noodles if that's what you would prefer to avoid doing. So spaghetti squash, it's not expensive, relatively speaking. That's kind of a lot of food for 10 bucks. Um, it's gonna make, with some sauces, it's probably gonna make you know 10 lunches at least. Um, uh, it fools your mind and your body into thinking you've had a very you know fulfilling pasta lunch, but you don't feel like you need a nap afterward. It's probably as much fiber as a lot of human beings get in a whole day or maybe even a whole week. And um, at this time of year in Ontario, it's inexpensive and um, fun to work with. Easy. That was it. That's it. Okay. That's it. That's all the work that's involved in a spaghetti squash. Okay, so there you have all the work that it takes to process one spaghetti squash. And as you can see, um, it really does look like spaghetti. It has all the things that you look for in spaghetti. It absorbs flavor. It provides a basis for a dish with sauce. And um, it's, but on the other hand, there's no pasta. There's no uh, wheat. There's no uh, very little carbohydrates, tons of fiber. Um, I am going to, uh, just for example, I'm going to put a little bit of um, spaghetti squash, about a cup, I think. Um, that's a food guide serving of a vegetable. A cup of uh, spaghetti squash into a container and then on top of it I will put um, some homemade pasta sauce okay so we'll put uh, a little bit of homemade tomato vegetable and meat pasta sauce that's a, like a pretty good portion for a snack or a lunch and I'm going to um, label it and freeze it in a feta container but I'll label it so I know what it actually is I don't freeze feta anyway, so. Um, and there you go. There's a spaghetti squash and pasta sauce lunch or snack that can sit in the freezer until you need it. Um, from this squash, I would imagine that I would get like 20 of these. I don't think I'll probably uh, make 20 of these, but um, uh, but that's a good amount of squash and you could do you can do it in Ziploc bags. You don't have to have containers or you can just freeze the squash um, as squash and then decide what you want to do with it when you thaw it. So um, um, I've had some really great squash recipes that had uh, fish sauce on top, like a, a sole sauce or a tuna sauce, or um, it really goes well with a lot of things. You could add it to a soup or to a, um, to a pepper pot. Um, so I could freeze, you know, a big, good size Ziploc bag of this. And then one day on a chilly fall morning, I think, you know, I want to cook something or in the dead of winter when nothing's in season. Um, I'm going to thaw something and cook it and I will have the spaghetti squash in the freezer. So all about buying it cooking it uh, and uh, storing it in season and then doing something with it when I like to or make a whole bunch of portion controlled lunches uh, ahead of time while the squash is fresh and while the pasta is here. Um, either way, it works out great. And um, for about, I don't know, a dollar a pound, maybe a dollar twenty-five a pound, um, you can enjoy spaghetti squash. This whole bowl was 10 bucks, okay? And this squash in the market, 
564. So just to give you a benchmark for what you're paying for spaghetti squash, and it's easy as you saw, it's easy as you saw to process a spaghetti squash. So this is Rita Smith, the number one food fairy, telling you be confident in the kitchen, try new things. I think I screwed up the first three spaghetti squashes that I cooked. I really didn't have a clue what I was doing, but now I got it figured out. Um, I'm happy to share it with you. So be confident in the kitchen, enjoy yourself, take advantage of Ontario in September, um, cook lots, freeze lots, experiment lots, and uh, I wish you well. Have a great time cooking for your family. So sick of reality TV I'm so tired